We at the SCP Foundation Files Explored do thoroughly enjoy seasonal content. And today's seasonal content is focused on a rather unpleasant insectoid creature. SCP-439, the Bone Hive. Object class, Euclid. The special containment procedures are as follows. Specimen is to be kept at Armand Research Site 45. Hazardous life forms wing in a sealed, locked, 38-liter, 10-gallon container. It is a Type G containment unit with connected oxygen supply. Specimen is to be fed through feeding tube 16A with approved nutrient substance X-F. Handling is available to Level 2 personnel and higher. The description of SCP-439 is an insect of unknown origin, somewhat resembling a greyish, semi-translucent Fortuculia arculia, otherwise known as the common earwig. Approximately 2.5 centimeters in length, originally located slash obtained in mainland China in the classified province, no other specimen has been found as yet. SCP-439 is relatively harmless when encountered on safe terms. Aside from the ability to deliver a firm, painful pinch with its abdominal forceps, the true hazard of this creature lies in its habitat construction and its reproductive systems, which is initiated when the specimen enters the mouth of a sleeping human being. This will only occur with humans. Other life forms have been presented to SCP-439 and have been uniformly rejected by the insectoid creature. Upon location of a suitable host, the specimen will hide itself in the immediate vicinity and wait until the victim has fallen asleep. How is it able to determine the state of sleep is currently unknown, but it has shown to be accurate in data expunged for security reasons. Out of time, times out of data expunged for security reasons. Upon entering the mouth of the new host, SCP-439 will travel down the trachea and take up residence in one of the victim's lungs. In approximately four to eight hours after awakening, the host will complain of excessive chest pains and shortness of breath, followed shortly by abdominal cramping. The tightness in the chest will increase as well as a fever until the host is fully incapacitated. It is around this time that the onset of phyroplasia ossification, progressiva, occurs, a disorder that is normally genetic in nature that promotes the growth of bone into the muscle tissue. For those who don't know, it is basically calcifying the mus musculature. Since the production of new bone growth is so rapid, the procedures are also very, very painful for the subject in question. With the new bone spurs occasionally sprouting through the very flesh of its victim, while this is happening, the host will become compelled to seek shelter in a darkened, enclosed space, such as inside a household cabinet or a closet or even in heating ductworks. Within the first three days, without treatment at least, the host will become completely withdrawn and immobile due to the extreme pain of new bone growth, coupled with the difficulty in breathing. At this point, the subject's body will begin the final stage of transformation into a bone hive. After having concealed itself in its new home, the body of the host will huddle into the fetal position. The entire proportions of the skeletal structure shift, along with data expunged until the host body is roughly spherical in nature and reduced to one three quarters of its original mass. New bone protrusions will grow and, if possible, anchor the body permanently to its new location. The skeletal structure is almost completely unrecognizable, having been converted to a round cage to protect the internal organs and the colony. At this point, the transformation is complete. The original queen that entered the host will have produced between 20 and 30,000 offspring that function as workers, drones, and warriors in a typical insect hive environment. Since only the queen is capable of reproduction, as in most hives, the rest of the hive's inhabitants are fortunately harmless, save for large, strong abdominal forceps of the warriors. The interior of the original host is nearly unrecognizable as a human body. Certain organs are removed and used as food, while others are modified by the worker insects to serve as egg incubation chambers. An ingenious method exists of using the host's own digestive system to process 
pieces of organic material collected by the warriors into a nutrient-rich slurry that feeds both the colony and sustains the host hive's structure. After four to six months, a new queen will emerge from within the ranks of the drones and choose a specific drone to mate with. At this point, the colony will destroy itself by rupturing, upon which the majority of the insects die. Workers and drones are unfit to survive outside of the host's body and warriors will abandon the site wandering away, their tasks complete. No food will be consumed by the warriors that isn't nutritive slurry produced by the origin, the hive of origin. The new queen will venture out, fertilized, to search for her own new hive. Incredibly, the trauma of the evacuation is not what causes the biological activity to cease in the hive, but starvation. Addendum, in a particularly disturbing development, Dr. Redacted performed a range of experiments to determine the extent of damage to the host body after its finished transformation into a hive. While it has been previously discovered in autopsy that portions of the brain are hollowed out to serve as food, others are left intact, presumably to regulate what bodily functions continue. During the last rounds of experimentation, Dr. Redacted took the opportunity to examine a hive at close range shortly after the transformation. While the eyes were eventually reached and used as a food source, at the point that Dr. Redacted performed her examination, they were still intact. Opening eyelids and examining them with a flashlight, Dr. Redacted discovered that the host's eyes followed the beams. The experimentation was terminated and no further testing is scheduled. I'm not going to lie, in this particular case, the SCP Foundation Files Explored strongly recommends that if you find one of these things, kill it. Kill it with fire. Thank you very much for watching this video and attending this briefing. Thank you and goodbye.